So we're going to be using GDevelop to make games. Uh, there are two options. You can download and run it as an application on your computer. I much prefer to use the online version because it just runs in any browser and you don't miss out on any functionality. You, you get everything. Uh, when you first go in, if you've previously created the project, it prompts you to open it. Uh, but the first time you go in, you just get straight to this screen. Uh, this, there's some really interesting stuff here, which we you can go through in your own time. If you're an independent kind of person, there's actually whole courses and uh, it shows you all kinds of examples of how to do things. Uh, I'm just going to go straight through this with you anyway. So start building directly. Uh, it does give you some uh, sort of template options. I again prefer to just start from scratch and I'm going to name it with my name. Uh, I recommend that you do that, include your name. It just makes life easier for me. Uh, so this is our blank game space. Uh, we need to add some objects into it. One of the things I love about GDevelop is you actually get a whole bunch of free assets which you can use, uh, which are really high quality. You can just go to scroll through and pick the art style that suits you. I like this one. Um, I quite like having these pirates in my games. So click on big guy and add him to the scene. And Wait a second, there we go. He's now over here in my objects which are available. I can drag him into the scene and there he is. Um, we're gonna kind of make a platformer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make him controllable as a platformer character and I'm gonna give him a platform to walk on. So I'm gonna add another object from um, the same place. Um, we'll talk later about how we create our platforms but I'm just gonna throw this thing in for the moment just kind of quick and dirty. Did I forget to add it? Feels like I did. Wood background, add to the scene. Yeah, that's better. And drag that in. And I'm just gonna resize it to kind of be a thing that he can walk on. So um, if I hit play now to play my game, it won't actually do anything. Well, he will have an animation, but nothing else will, will do anything. There'll be no control. Um, just sits there doing nothing. I'm demonstrating it. Kind of wish I hadn't bothered now watching this little loading bar go across the screen. I have an animation, but it doesn't do anything. My keyboard's not doing anything. So what we need to do, a key idea is that of behaviors. So if I edit this object and edit this guy, we can see here we've got some animations um, that the idle animation, run animation, ground animation. We'll come to those in a later video. Uh, but he's got behaviors as well, and he hasn't got any behaviors yet. Um, so these are the kind of standard things that the G Develop people know you're likely to want when you make a game. Um, some of them are for different types of games. We're going to go for platformer character. We're just going to go with the defaults for the moment. Um, and I know that a platformer character has gravity, and he's just going to off the screen so what we need is this to be a actual platform which he can run on so if I apply that and now I hit play and wait for the loading bar to go across the screen again I think I already had it I need to close the pop-up maybe I don't know anyway um, there he is, and I can go left, I can go right, and I can jump with the space bar. It's really annoying, the up arrow I feel should be the jump, and the space should be shoot, but um, we can cross that bridge later on when we look at keyboard events and so on. So I think that's enough for the first video. We've now got a playable character, and uh, much as it's not much of a game yet, uh, there's, there's more to come.